Oh, what a gorgeous day out there. We're looking at Lincoln City from the Chinook Winds Casino. Looks like it's going to be a gorgeous sunset. I'm sure people all along the coast getting out their conch shells, getting ready for later tonight. But in the meantime, we have an exciting, exciting announcement. Matt Zafino's here, and he's going to talk to us in high-level detail about this weather. Matt, what's going on? Why is it so hot so early? Yeah, well, there's a couple of reasons for that. We're going to get into one of them in detail. Um, and you know, you guys said get nerdy, so I'm gonna I'm gonna go deep into the science of it. Um, but to answer the big picture question, you said part of it, uh, Pat, is simply the weather pattern that's developing. Big area of clear, obviously, and very warm air building over the northwest. But the other thing that happens is right down at the surface level, not up high in the atmosphere, right down at ground level. And we actually look to the east for one of the reasons why it's going to get so warm. Notice the Cascades. There's Mount Hood, of course, there. It's a very warm 89 degrees right now. The winds are light, but east winds are beginning to develop. And that's one of the reasons why there's the east wind at Troutdale and at Hillsborough and east wind just beginning to develop. But that east wind this time of the year is key to us getting really, really warm. Here's what happens. We get down sloping winds. We have mountains to our east, of course, and you have probably heard somewhere along the line that air as it rises and ascends a mountain, it cools. That's why it's always cooler at higher elevations. But the opposite happens when air descends a mountain. It actually warms and dries. Now, all things being equal, if the humidity was the same here and the elevation was the same on both sides of your mountain, then the air would end up at pretty much the same temperature that it started at over here. But that's not the case here in Oregon because for a couple of reasons. Number one, the elevation here is higher. So it's starting at a higher point. It's not going to cool as much as it will warm as it descends because it descends to a lower point. So it has that much more elevation to warm. That's part of it. The other thing that can happen, and it's not the case this weekend because the air is so very dry, but if there is moisture here, then as the air ascends and cools, that moisture condenses into cloud. And so the rate at which the air cools is less than the rate at which the air warms on the other side. Here's the reason for that, something called the latent heat of condensation. So when you have clouds that are condensing out of the air, and they do that, you're going from a higher energy state where the air, where the water is a vapor. So those molecules are pinging around really rapidly. Then it condenses into a liquid. They're not pinging around quite as rapidly. So you're going from a higher state, the vapor, higher energy state, the vapor, to a lower energy state, the liquid. Well, energy is conserved. We don't create it, we don't destroy it. So in that conservation of energy, it's released. And that is actual heat. It's called latent heat. So it lowers the rate of cooling when that happens. And then on the other side, that doesn't happen. That's because the air is drying. So there's no latent heat being released in the atmosphere. If you live in a place like Denver or Helena, Montana or Calgary, Alberta, Canada, you're used to this process. It's called the Chinook and you get some incredible warming on the downslope side of the mountain. It's just that for us, we're on the downslope with an east wind. These are, by the way, Pat, called adiabatic lapse rates. The cooling on the, on the windward side and then the adiabatic warming on the downwind side. So that's one of the big reasons why we're going to be warming up this weekend. Uh, fascinating, Matt, and I felt like I was just in a high level science class there. The one thing that lost me was the clouds and things moving around and then things not moving around and what impact that has. Ah, OK, so that that goes to why when you get condensation on the windward side of the mountain, you're taking water vapor out of the air. It's invisible which is a high energy state. Any, any vapor is in a higher energy state than it is as liquid, and a liquid is a higher energy state than a solid. So just think about water. If you have water vapor, it's got to be warm, so the molecules are moving around a lot more quickly. Then, for whatever reason, it cools, and it condenses into a different state. We call that a phase change from a vapor to a liquid. Well, during that phase change, heat is released, and that's why the rate of cooling is lower than the rate of warming on the either side of the mountain. Okay, now I got it. Thank you, Professor Zafino. You bet. That's, that's awesome. Good stuff. Hey, with the scorching